come into tournaments, you're sort of kidding yourself, you know, because I'm thinking sh I probably shouldn't really be playing in it if I'm not really putting the hours in because you're not really giving yourself a chance. I suppose pe people do things different ways. I mean, Hossein thought maybe, you know, you might want to take a break, but obviously you enjoy playing. I know that, I mean, you took a quite a long break after you won the World Championship. I don't think you picked up a queue for two or three months, yeah. did you? It's a yeah. long time to be away from the game, isn't it? Yeah, I was just playing, just playing golf, you know. Uh, and just enjoying a bit of time off. Yeah. Uh, and then I practised, obviously, up until, probably up until just before the European when I started sort of putting my cue down a bit. I mean, probably ever since uh, I basically come out and said, obviously, like, that I'm suffering at the moment. Since then, I've not really played that much at all. And since yeah. you did come out and, you know, explain your, mm. your your problems, and do you feel like there, there has been a kind of a weight lifted? I mean, or do you even feel even more under the spotlight now? No, no, I feel as I should have done it a long time ago. You know, I've been suffering for for a few years and bottling everything up and not really not really saying anything. I've been on medication for probably four or five years now. Uh, and Vicky kept saying to me, like, I think you should probably say it, but I'm not one of them to just say it and, and make an excuse, you know. I mean, there was never really a right time and I never felt that it was the right time to say it. It was just we was travelling home after the Masters. Vicky had gone into the services to get a drink and I just sat in the car and just sat there just staring out the wind and just felt I can't carry on, just keep bottling it up and, and trying to hide it all, you know, and just basically wearing a mask, like I said in the tweet. So I thought the best way to do it, rather than just make an announcement and say it in an interview, I thought if you do it on Twitter, obviously there's a lot of people on there, it's probably the best way, and it felt the easier way for me rather than just verbally say it in front of the camera. So, to, to, you know, all these world titles you've won, you, you've done even better to win them. You know, thinking about it, I, I follow cricket, as you know, and I've mm. read a book about a cricketer, I won't mention his name, but he said that he had issues, you know, he had he, sort of mental health problems. Yeah. But when he was out in the middle batting, no one could get near him. He yeah. was out on it in, where it should affect him badly. Yeah. In his case, th that was his safe space. And maybe, you know, at the Crucible, when you've won all these world titles, Given you said it's been going on a few years, yeah. is that a safe space for you out there? The Maybe. Table? I mean, when I'm at the table and obviously you're working out the breaks, you sort of think of nothing else other than the yeah. shots you're playing. The hardest part for me, I find, is when I'm sitting in my chair and trying not to think about too many things. And it's not really snooker related, it's just a lot of things off the table. 2016, I was in a bad place. Even when I won the Worlds, I mean, two tournaments before I played and I missed both of them, wasn't going to play in the Worlds. And even Vicky said, now, if you look back, even when I'd won the final and I picked the trophy up, Vicky said she came to the table with her and Sophia. And I basically just looked for them as if there wasn't even there. And she knew that I wasn't really, wasn't really right then. But, uh, you know, I mean, like I say, I've been suffering for a while, been on different medication. Doctors put me on another different medication and I'm working hard with this doctor. Got another session with him tomorrow morning. So hopefully now, like you say, I've, I've mentioned it. I feel as though half the battle is won, but there's still a long way to go. Do you feel that you can be more yourself? You know, you, you talked about, you know, a mask and, yeah. you know, a facade of, you know, yeah. listen, you are the jester from Leicester, <laughs> you know. Um, and, you know, you, you chat, we have fun. Um, yeah. All of the tour, I know the snooker community have been very supportive to you. Yeah. But how hard was it to kind of keep up that when, yeah. when things were really yeah, tough? very, very hard. I mean, obviously, like, when I was at tournaments and... I mean, sometimes I was OK. I was always up and down, which obviously that's what depression is like. Sometimes you can go for a period where you feel sort of half OK and then other times you're not as good. But I was doing it for a while, you know. I mean, people were saying to me, you OK? And I was just like, yeah, yeah, fine, when really I knew that I'm not where, at least now, by coming out with it, if somebody says, oh, are you OK? And you're like, not really, I'm having not such a good day. I mean, especially at the Masters, even yourself, Rachel, when you came up to me, even during the match when I played Barry, you said, oh, you just didn't look yourself out there. And basically I just ignored what the situation was and said, no, no, I'm fine, I just played poor. But Vicky knew at the start of the match that going out there, it was going to be tough because she knows me as good as anyone and she knows that if I'm in a good frame of mind, she knows what I'm capable of. But she sort of said to me after I'd lost, she said, look, obviously going out there, I just didn't fancy you to win even before the start of the match because I knew how you was. Yeah, I yeah. did I did notice, you know, even at the Masters, and, and mm. I know, listen, we've done so many losing interviews. They're yeah. never nice, they're yeah. never easy, whoever the player is. But, yeah. you know, I did see something in you then. Yeah, I, just, you I know, was like, are I, you OK? Yeah, and, and I didn't want to just... I mean, there's, like I say, there's never a right time to do it. If you do it after you've lost, people say, oh, it's an excuse, obviously, like, because he got bashed up, be Barry and stuff, which was never the case. But, I mean, whenever I'd done it, people could use it as an excuse, you know. And like I say, they didn't really feel a right time to do it. It's just I was sat in the in the car, just basically staring into space, and I thought, look, I just can't carry on, obviously, hiding it, you know? Yeah. I felt as though, obviously, I needed to come out with it. It's difficult because you, at the tournaments, even at the Masters, I can think of that week, 
we were having chats, we were coming up, we were talking about the cricket, you know, which is, was no fun for any of us to speak about. But generally, you're always the, the guy who comes up and says, as a chat. Yeah. Of, of all the players on the tour, yeah. you speak to everyone, the guy you're playing, you know, all of us guys who work in the, in the media and all that. And, yeah. and it's from an outsider's point of view, and I mean, I know you reasonably well, but not like really well. Yeah. It's hard to see it. You know, you can't see the problems because sometimes... You put on, as you say, a brave face, yeah. and you, you're very chatty, you know, yeah. the venues. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, and you try and explain to someone what you're going through, and unless they've been through it themselves, it's hard to sort of yeah. relate to, to how you're feeling, you know. I mean, from one day to the next, I just don't know how I'm going to wake up. I could wake up tomorrow and I could feel sort of half OK, or I could wake up and feel, oh, it's like every day just seems like 48 hours long at the moment. Well, listen, it's it's, it's a battle, uh, clearly, but you, you, you've really shone a light on it, you know, because we see you as a happy-go-lucky, fun person, yeah. but really, you know, there, I'm sure there are many people in, in sport and, you know, in life, you know, yeah. going through these struggles. Hopefully you can find some inspiration and, and enjoyment here in, in Wales, because to be fair, the crowd, the fans, there were good you know, today and a good atmosphere, nice venue. And I know this tournament's very special to you. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's probably the, the most I've played in front of for a while, you know, whether <laughs> because I've made the announcement to feel sorry for me and they've all come, <laughs> all come crowding in. But uh, no, you know, I mean, I've had great support since I've come out with it. There's a lot of people on social media saying, look, obviously, if, if you need to chat, I'm here. And hopefully by coming out, I've helped a lot of other people as well, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm trying. Obviously, I'm not going to give up. I'm working hard with this doctor, uh, doing the things he's telling me to do, and I'm sure, obviously, I'll get through it. It's just going to take a while. It's not going to just be overnight. Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan, and welcome to Eurosport Snooker on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Snooker.